like probably four or five years ago, but it was a long time ago and I live in a different place now and so I figured I would do another bookshelf tour. A few disclaimers, I've seen um, like a handful of these online and it seems like all of them are done slightly differently. So I don't really know what the correct way to do this is, but I'm going to try. And I guess the other disclaimer is our office space, like where all of our bookshelves are, is not very well lit. So <laughs> it is like evening time on top of that, so it's kind of dark, I'm sorry. I'm not very good at setting up lighting, so... Eh. Sorry. So I figured I'd just kind of show you what is on my bookshelf and tell a couple stories about different um, things on here and uh, we'll have ourselves just a great time. Funny story like about how these bookshelves came to be. When my husband and I first moved into this house, uh, there were no bookshelves here and we had decided since we were going to use this room as our office, um, kind of library-ish room, that we would have some custom bookshelves installed. We really weren't great at the whole like home ownership adulting thing and uh, my husband went on to Craigslist which I do not recommend and found this like artisan woodsman which I also do not recommend and they like exchanged some messages back and forth and he ended up being the one we hired to build these bookshelves. The first uh, I guess red flag was that he wanted to do everything in the house so cutting all of the wood, um, assembling everything so we had our entire house covered in sawdust for like two weeks. It took way longer than it was supposed to. He ended up being like super weird. I think like he really made himself at home there was one day that I came home and he had pulled out like our pots and pans and was cooking stuff in our house so the whole process of getting these bookshelves made was kind of a disaster but they ended up being awesome part of the reason they're awesome is because my husband's the one that ended up staining them so like he did a, you know some of the work basically great bookshelves horror story getting there, but uh, let's dive into it. So this is kind of my um, section of the bookshelves. There's like three different areas and a lot of Mark's stuff are on the first um, two, but I have this kind of space to myself. So one of the things that I keep on the top shelf of my bookshelf is um, a like preview um, teaser of Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. I got this uh, at BookCon a couple years ago, 2016, and like the little story behind this is that I have lyric sheets for all of the book-based songs that I've written, and my goal is to have every book-based song that I've written be signed by the author who wrote the book it was inspired by. So I went to BookCon in 2016 and um, Veronica was promoting Carve the Mark. And when I got to her signing line, I had gotten a ticket for her signing line because I wanted her to sign the Pretend It's Home lyric sheet. But I got to the signing line and it turned out she was only signing um, these. So I was super bummed about it, but like I had my lyric sheet with me anyway, so I just decided to like show it to her and explain that I had written the song based on uh, the Divergent series. So I got up there and I was super nervous and I said, you know, hi, my name is Beth, I write book-based songs and I know you're only uh, like signing these previews but um, I wrote this song based on the Divergent series and I just wanted to show you like the lyrics for it. I know you can't sign it and she was just like, it's okay, I'll sign it and like her publicist was kind of like, Ruh, but um, but she was so nice to sign that for me, so I have it framed up in my music room, but um, that's kind of the story behind this. One of the other things that I love on this bookshelf is um, my Cinder series. If you guys haven't read the series, it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I first heard about the book Cinder because I was um, working on getting funding on Kickstarter for my first, what ended up being album at the time I was just trying to make an EP, and there was one of the high your prize levels was for like I think like $500 because I never thought somebody would give me $500 I said that I would write a song about any book series that you wanted this girl ended up uh, 
giving $500 towards the album project and she said she wanted me to write a song based on Cinder. I read it, I loved it, and that's where the song Midnight comes from. And this is especially special to me because um, this is signed by Marissa Mayer. Ooh, I just dropped something. And she is actually the first author that I had sign one of my lyric sheets. I went to Utopia, I think it was 2014, maybe 2013, 2014. I met her there, she was one of the guests, and she not only signed my copy of Cinder, but she signed my lyric sheet for Midnight. So that was really special because it was the first time I had met an author um, whose books I had written a song about. And then my next shelf, which you can kind of see here, is my Harry Potter shelf. I've got several little, like, things. I've got my little stuffed Sniffler. I just thought it was super cute. And then I have little Harry Potter because I found him at Hot Topic and he was on sale and I thought that he probably should live on my bookshelf. And then I've got um, the full set of the, like, newer... I guess they're not the newest version, but like the picture covers of um, Harry Potter where it all forms Hogwarts. I got all of the originals, and then I've got the three illustrated that are out, as well as um, Fantastic Beasts, Tales of Vila Bard, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So that's like my Harry Potter shelf. One of the things I love about this shelf, other than the fact that it's Harry Potter, because I love Harry Potter, I went to England about two months ago and they had the um, 20th anniversary edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So I ended up buying that as one of my souvenirs. But then when I got back, I got really sad that I hadn't gotten like the traditional cover. So I ended up ordering not only the traditional cover of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but I found this like really neat purple and orange cover of the Philosopher's Stone. Um, which I thought was gorgeous. Boom! So I was trying to figure out how I could collect all these different editions without having like 10 different sets of all seven books and so I ultimately decided that I was going to just collect the first book um, as many different covers as I could get. And then I also got from the new covers of the American edition, I think these are the 20th anniversary edition, um, so I have that one. And then of course my next shelf is completely dedicated to Cassandra Clare. I almost have the full set of the um, Infernal Devices, the newer covers that they did. I'm just missing the first one. Honestly, I don't really know where I'm gonna have room for it anyway, because this, this shelf is very packed tight. But I have the full set of the Mortal Instruments, I'm working on getting, because uh, I decided recently that I wanted to try and get for every series either all paperback or all hardcover because I realized I have a lot of mixes. So I am um, still need to get hardcovers of City of Bones and City of Ashes, but I've got hardcovers of everything else. Of course I have my very beat up edition of City of Bones, which uh, I ended up using to write Warrior. There's all of the original post-it notes in there for uh, song ideas. And then I have, if you can see it, the um, still working on getting a hardcover of Clockwork Angel, but I've got Clockwork Prince and Princess. I've got the copy of Lady Midnight that I used to write uh, Wild Heart, which came out in August. And then I have the first book of the Magisterium series. I've got the 10th anniversary of the City of Bones. And I did order it signed by Cassandra, so that was pretty cool. I mean, this artwork is completely gorgeous. And then the Bane Chronicles, Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, um, Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows, and again, trying to figure out how I'm going to have room for Queen of Air and Darkness because it's a full shelf. So my next shelf underneath, I've got my Sarah J Moss section over here, as well as the uh, Court of Thorns and Roses grouping. I'm still missing a Court of Frost and Starlight. I still need to add that to my collection. I've got all four of the Red Queen series books, including Warstorm, which is signed by Victoria Aveyard. I was fortunate enough that I got to play and sing at one of her signings, and so I do have the signed lyric sheet for her, as well as Sarah J Moss I got to play for um, Tower of Dawn. So this one is signed as well, somewhere. Yeah! Then I have the Delirium series. I've got a couple of the different covers. I've got the original covers, and then I've got Pandemonium and Requiem of like the newer covers that they did. And then um, the Shadowy series, as well as several other of um, Lauren Oliver's books. So I tried to organize my shelf as like more of the like fantasy type stuff, and then towards the bottom is where um, I've got a lot of my contemporary novels. And then the bottom shelf is really just a mixture of both.
I've got a full like stack of John Green novels. I've got a couple of my favorite um, contemporary novels, Mosquito Land by David Arnold and Kids of Appetite by David Arnold. Both of these are great novels if you get a chance to check them out. And then I actually have a whole section of books that are like people I've met and people that I know um, through book world stuff, so more like independent authors. So my friend Megan Duke is on here, Joy Calloway, who I wrote um, her audiobook music for two of her books, Casey Bond, who I wrote uh, Eyes Wide Open for, Christina Benjamin, who wrote The Geneva Project, and I did audiobook music for her as well. All right, I feel really dumb right now, but I realize that my bottom shelf is probably my biggest shelf, and you aren't gonna be able to see anything in the video, so we're just, we, you know, oh my god, I feel like this has just gone off the rails. But yes, yeah, so my bottom shelf of my bookshelf, what, Bubby? Do you want to come sit with me? Come here. Okay. Sit. Sit. Oh god. Okay. I'm almost. I'm almost done. I can't just do this with your butt in it. Shh. shh, shh. I know. I oh, know. Thank you. You're gonna knock something over. Annie. Oh my god. I can't really continue like this exactly. So on my bottom shelf, I have my Mulan doll, which is one of my prized possessions because I feel like Mulan is by far the most badass of the Disney female characters. And she's very underrepresented. I remember going to Disney World when I was younger and being like, where is all my Mulan merch? So I keep her on my bookshelf because she is worthy. So down here, I've got another author friend, Liz Long, and her, um, her series. Stephanie Garber, I have not read this book yet, but I've heard good things. I know you guys request it. Same thing for the Lainey Taylor, um, Lainey Taylor series. Hunger Games, I haven't really dug into Miss Peregrine's yet. I started listening to the audiobook and it was terrible, like just the reader was terrible. And I finally got to the point where I'm like, I think I'm not enjoying this because I don't like the reader rather than the book. So I decided to drop the audiobook and I just haven't had a chance to get back to it. And then the Mara Dyer series, which I thought about after that last book, just getting rid of these because it made me so mad. But I figured that was petty and not the right thing to do. And then just a couple other random, um, books, a lot of things that I have not read yet but are on my list. Uh, to all the boys I've loved before, I have not read these books, but I love the movie so much on Netflix, and I know that's like terrible to have uh, watched the movie and not read the books, but I'm going to rectify it. I have the books to read. The Vampire Academy series, which I really liked. Um, this other duology I have down here, um, Renee Aldier, The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger. I loved these. I don't know, I think it was just like a really fresh take on um, kind of the young adult uh, tropes. So I really would recommend those as well. And then I've got um, Lauren Kate's Fallen series, which I think I got through two, maybe three. Um, and they were okay, but I just wasn't feeling like super compelled to keep going with them. So a couple other things that are missing because I'm currently reading them. On my top shelf, I've got the um, Shadow and Bone series, which I am currently reading the third one. And then I also have Claire Legrand's Furyborn. It's the first in her series. I don't have a lot of time to sit down and read like physical books, so I end up going through um, through audiobooks faster, but that means I get a little behind sometimes and it takes me a lot longer than I would like it to for me to finish stuff, so I just need more hours. I just need more hours in the day. So yeah, I feel like I just really did not give you a great bookshelf tour, for which I am sorry. I had like beautiful intentions. The execution does not feel uh, great. But I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Love you guys, and I will see you next time.